Phil McGrain, you're back. Yes. Matt, always happy to be here. We talked last week about a lot of different things having to do the election system. One of the big pieces that came out is we were you and I were talking about how you're required to have an ID for registering to vote. And then you're always asked for an ID when you go in to actually vote. These are two distinct different things. Yep. And I think it's something like 98 or 99 percent of people do use their driver's license when they go in to vote. The number of people that came out after those clips and like, yeah, bro, but like illegal aliens are getting these, you know, voting and getting these government issued IDs left and right. And dead people are voting the, in, the intensity with which they want people to to keep repeating that is wild to me. So listen to me, dead people and illegal aliens. Are you worried about these people? It, are, are we worried? We're always worried to make sure we protect the vote. Doesn't matter what group we're talking about, whether it's dead people, legal aliens, uh, felons, others, making sure that everybody who's on the voter rolls is eligible. Maintaining clean voter rolls is one of the areas that we focus on. And just really trying to give people uh, confidence that when they go to the polling place that their vote's going to count the same as everybody else. And I think there's numerous steps. One of the most common conversations I have is people really focus on that interaction at the polling place. When they show up, they show their ID. That's where you get the 98.8% of voters show their driver's license, half a percent show a passport. Like we track all this information. We track exactly what ID people showed when they uh, come in and they vote. Uh, but I think there's so much more than that. So when people register to vote, we are checking in real time against the Department of Transportation. So it's not just you showed us your driver's license. It's also that we independently contact DMV to compare the information that you've provided with the information on your driver's license records. And we're working to even advance that right now. We have a project underway, not ready for this November election, but in the future, where we'll be able to compare your photo, your driver's license photo from DMV to the information that we have separately. Um, we're doing, but we're doing checks yeah. behind the scenes. And I think that's important for everybody to know. Okay. One, a couple things. Um, for the driver's license, how does ITD confirm? Well, do you know anybody from ITD that I could talk to? Maybe Probably. don't. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, well, of course, well, I know people. We work with ITD all the time. Because th this is this is what's interesting. I uh, people keep having this idea. First off, they have this idea that people can register to vote without an ID. It's like, no, that's not true. Not true. And then the idea is, okay, but anybody can get an ID, or anybody no, can get a driver's also not true. Also not true. Anybody who's gone to get an ID knows that it is not like. I love the idea you painted it where people are like, oh, they just walk down there and they're like handing IDs out like candy. Go right. try to get your star card right now. It does not feel like you're going to get candy. Like you have to provide your birth certificate. You have to get your social security card. You have to have all sorts of documentation to get in and go through the process. Um, part of that is like we've really beefed up. The Real ID Act has enhanced uh, just identification across the board. So not just specific to voting, but for all sorts of purposes, whether it's TSA, other instances, uh, Real ID really has changed the game. And I think uh, just databases that we manage now are so much better. If we were having the same conversation 30 years ago, it looks entirely different. Oh, sure. We really rely then on the actual card and looking at it. We're now... The voter registration rolls are being re compared all the time with the ITD records, which are also being compared with Department of Homeland Security records. I mean, this is part of how we verify citizenship is we're partnering as agencies, different levels of government to connect and compare data that we have to say like, oh, yes, this is Matt Todd. Yes, he does live in Eagle, Idaho. He is an American citizen. Yes, he's eligible to vote. We're doing that with everybody. So we have a million registered voters, a little over a million, and we've made sure to do comparisons. And in preparation for the November election, we've been circling back and double checking this. We're also comparing to Department of Corrections, making sure that felons are removed on a regular basis. So at least monthly, if not a couple times a month, we are checking uh, against vital statistics to make sure there are no dead people. So that's one of the common things that people worry about, right? This isn't Chicago in the 60s. This is Idaho. Chicago and, in the 60s? Yes, what is, happened in the 60s? I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't good. It that's wasn't why they good. called it's the Windy City. Chicago. Exactly. The, uh, but it, things have evolved dramatically and the tools that we have. Like, again, when you go in to vote, almost everywhere in Idaho, and if I have my way, it will truly be everywhere in Idaho, when you check in at the polling location, you have this electronic poll book. 
it's been one of the most revolutionary parts of the process because it ensures uniformity in terms of how every voter is treated and that the law is enforced. And part of that is one of the first steps, the poll worker has to ask you for your ID because the poll worker can't skip that question. They can't process you until they've asked for your ID. And when they do, they actually take your driver's license and they scan the barcode on the back. It makes the voting experience faster and better for the voter. Make sure we find the right Matt Todd. Don't mix it up right. with any of the other ones. Um, but also, it like it confirms, like, oh, yep, Matt showed his driver's license, along with everybody else who showed their driver's license. Like, those are simple safeguards that are in place, let alone some of the data comparison that we do. There's always the potential. So one thing in elections, you and I have talked about in the past, we try to put up walls where we need walls, try to stop people from getting in. But we also try to put up systems to detect if anything happens. You know, when you think of security and a security camera, a security camera doesn't stop anything. It catches things, though. And we have both systems in place in our election system. So if somebody does get registered, so let's say a felon does go and register same day, we can catch that. We can look say, oh, did they register? Did they vote? And then we can pursue it as one of our voter fraud cases. And you and I were talking beforehand. I think what surprises a lot of people is our most common form of voter fraud is actually felons trying to vote. Okay, people who they, think maybe they could, but they can't. Okay, this is actually a great question because I, again, people primarily talk about illegal aliens and dead people. And it, it, like that's not what we see. Okay, so, and, okay. Okay. First of all, we definitely don't see dead people voting. I want to make that abundantly clear. There are no dead people voting. We are routinely uh, cleaning, we're using vital statistic information to make sure we remove. And we have processes that even after every general election, we do what's referred to as the purge, where we go through and clean out any, so just people who've moved, other things to clean up the voter rolls regularly. Every year, we provide a report to the legislature on the voter roll maintenance that we're doing and how many people remove for what various reasons. Uh, often, people because die. What people move, they come and go. Sure. You know that's just part of maintaining an active, live database. You told me, uh, uh, um, I think, in one of our previous conversations, I can't remember when. It, isn't it true that if you, with regard to dead people, you compare it to you know death certificates and things like that? And you outline, you know, information with coroner's offices across the state. But if somebody like, like if I go off into the wilderness and I just die and I'm just gone and th there's no certificate yeah. or, or anything like that, if I don't actively vote in a local election in four years, in yep. a four year time frame, I automatically get removed anyway, right? Correct. Yep, exactly. Yeah. If you don't vote over a four year period after every general election, we'll go through and remove those people. And that's part of just like the catch all. If we didn't catch it somewhere along the line, so let's go to the vital statistics. Let's say you went into the woods in Alaska and we never heard about it, uh, we'll still make sure to remove those rolls because you need to be active and we should have active voters on the rolls, right? And sometimes we remove people simply because they're just disengaged. They're still here, they're still eligible, everything else. But if you don't vote every four years, hopefully more often than that, because we do have elections a lot more than every four years, um, then we'll take you off the rolls and you need to re-register. Now, again, to be clear, it's not that you've never seen somebody who's an illegal alien attempt to vote. It, it's not that that doesn't happen. It's that the frequency with which that happens is very, very low. And anybody saying, hey, this is like there was that guy years ago who was like, oh, we like mon whatever, crazy people. But the point is you have people accusing um, uh, accusing illegal aliens of voting like 10,000 votes or 20,000 votes. It's like from the secretary of state standpoint – we don't, those do not exist. Those don't. No, like I, I somebody think, would have I to think, see them and be like, okay, there are the twenty thousand illegal aliens voting. It's like, where are they? Like, there is no data on that. No, no, and we do so much to make sure of that. Like, I think you're exactly right. Like, does do we have voter fraud cases? Yes, we do, and we prosecute them. We have prosecutors who are willing to pursue these things, whether it's say an illegal alien and working with ICE, for example. I mean, deportation is one of the byproducts of voting illegally if uh, you're a non-citizen. The uh, same thing with felons, like we do prosecute those. Same thing with people trying to vote twice. All of these things we safeguard against. But all, beyond just us having those and we catch it. So no, there is not large numbers, exactly to your point. But it's also not non-existent, right? We have to safeguard these things and be vigilant because there are people who try. But when we catch those things, we pursue them. But beyond that, and I think this is really important, we also do routine audits. After the November election, our team will send out auditors to go through and hand count 
the ballots and compare to the voter records in terms of who voted, how many ballots were cast, everything else, to verify the legitimacy of the results of the election. And we're not finding 20,000 extra votes or any other number of votes. We're actually finding, in most instances, a perfect match or we're finding that we're one, two, three votes off in a location when we're comparing the voter records. And so that, I think that's important is that we have the paper ballot and the paper record to verify against, that we're actually going in and doing the audits and double checking that work, and that we're constantly maintaining, you know, as we refer to it, kind of gardening the, the voter rolls is going through and making sure to pull out anything that doesn't look right. Um, we've also got partnerships with technology, with Boise State, for example, to look at are there ways we can constantly be monitoring these actively with some of the new data tools to make sure there aren't people on our voter rolls who don't belong. That is the only piece. The voter roll is the only piece that's connected to the internet, correct? Really good question. So we have two basically kind of two core systems in the voting process. We have what we refer to as the voting system. That's the system that produces the ballot. It's the one that reads whether you marked in the oval, all of that. That's a voting system. Sure. Never connected to the internet. And you'll hear us say, say it's illegal to have that system connected to the internet. Then we have the voter registration system. The voter registration system is the list of voters, the voter roll. And that is a networked system that is connected to the internet and by design, because it's what allows Ada County to be connected to Bonneville County, to be connected to Kootenai County, and for information to be shared and to verify that someone in Idaho Falls isn't also trying to vote here in Boise. Um, it's what allows us to connect to ITD and check driver's license information or to connect to the Social Security Administration or to connect to the save database from DHS. Though that is all there, and it's intentionally separate, both for security reasons, um, but also because this is the system that says how you voted. Like, did you vote for X, Y, or Z candidate? This is the system just saying, are you eligible? What are you eligible to vote on? We have a constitutional right to a secret ballot. By keeping these systems separate, we are also protecting the secrecy of your vote. So we determine you're eligible, we hand you, Matt, here's your ballot, you get to vote it. But once you stick it in the ballot box and once you, or you stick it in the absentee envelope, we don't get to know how you vote. You know, maybe yeah. you and your wife agree. Uh, you know, maybe when she comes here on the podcast, uh, you guys are on the same page. She will never but be. on she the ballot, we it. will never know for sure exactly what the two of you think. Yeah. Um, and one last, one last point, because I know our time is limited here. Um, considering that you have the voter registration, as or, or the voter roll connected to the internet, even if somebody was like, all right, here's a deal. I'm gonna get 10,000 people added oh. to Ada County, right? Like watch this, boom. And like China adds 10,000 people to Ada County. When those 10, first off, to actually take advantage of that, you have to have 10,000 people that now come into Ada County and start voting. Second, they will be asked to show ID, right? right. Like you have yes. to do all of They'll these steps. They'll still have steps. to go through all the same process. So not yes. only do you need an additional 10,000 bodies, but you have to go through the same laborious process of like, okay, like where's your you know, driver's license? Where's your this? And you'd where's have your that? to get them spread out to the precincts because I can tell you there are no precincts with 10,000 people anywhere in the state of Idaho. So like – there are so number one, we have lots of cybersecurity safeguards in place. Like I have a team of people dedicated to cybersecurity to prevent China from touching the voter rolls or anybody else. Doesn't matter sure, what sure, the source sure. is. Uh, but then to your point, like say miraculously did it and went undetected, which I have a really hard time believing. Right. Then you would also have to go through the step of you know a bus of people showing up with fake IDs to go through the process that would scan and that would match ITD records because again we're verifying against ITD and. It would be so involved and complicated to get to that point because we are doing all these different we're not relying on any one single point of failure we're putting multiple safeguards in place so that we can try and catch anything that might happen right and if they don't want to deal with actually getting ten thousand physical people it's like fine you do absentee fine you, you're still gonna Same have thing, to show, like you're we still, still are, running into this problem every single signature <laughs> against driver's license yeah. signatures Right. We're also checking like in Idaho, you have to request that absentee ballot. So we're validating on the front end and on the back end. Yeah. And we're doing the audits. We do audit the absentee ballots as well. So, again, multiple safeguards trying to protect it. God bless it, man. Listen, I know time's limited. Let's do this again because I yep. really want to hear about the – you and uh, the governor worked closely on, a, on an initiative to continue removing, making sure that only U.S. citizens vote. 
I really want to hear more about that next time. Sounds great.